So take a left. Oh. Take a left? Take a left. Which way am I gonna go? Oh, okay. I got it. Thanks, girls. Well, this is already it starts. We've been in the car for three minutes. It's only been three minutes. So we've got a new vehicle, the 250 Ram diesel to pull our paperweight basically and we're giving it a shot we're heading up to the Grand Canyon again and there are cars behind me just because I have a trailer I'm going 10 miles an hour over the speed limit they're riding all up on the back of the trailer because oh, I'm in an this RV. Is like a drive faster I'm in lane. a carpool lane. I'm in an HOV lane. With I didn't the, want to the stop. Camper, but I didn't want to stop. This is where I And that guy's speeding, he's going 43. I mean, what am I doing? What am I doing? That's, that's right, I'm yellow. If you can pass it if there's while like water I'm looking, for, if there's it's water not for really a, helping. If there's water for like a radiator, there's I don't There's an RV park up here. Let's see, is it free? It better be free. I don't think it's free. Stop at the machine. Good, how are you? Do you have a pass? No. Record information tells me how to pay online, and this is the only exit, okay? Will do. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is the water in the dump station open? So, Rich Fisher, let's talk about what just happened. <laughs> so, my husband is a huge support of don't pull your rig with fresh water on oh, the way. Well, hang on. We learned. We pulled this little Soul Horizon and I've pulled it full of water all the way up to the Grand Canyon before. We have. And wondered why we would hit some bumps and it would, you just feel the back of the truck start to move around. Yeah, and just wait a lot. And unfortunately, this has got a pretty minimum weight capacity to it after you get it full of food and everything else and I, I filled it up with water before so I learned last time we went out that I didn't fill up the water which made towing just a breeze and that's, that was before we had the diesel anyway anyway I, I emailed I emailed the Grand Canyon Park Service two two three weeks ago to confirm that the dump station and the water station would be functioning and I got an email back. Yes, absolutely. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. No problem. So what happened <laughs> was wait. That's why we sputter. We drive up here dry. We're boondocking, mm -hmm. so we need water. And by the way, the park is actually closed. The campground is closed. The campground is well. The campground up here is closed, but you can do whatever you want to on that. On BLM land, yeah. yeah. Right, that's right. what we're doing. We're boondocking on BLM. So we drive up. Three and a half miles and no water, no anything. Three and a half hours. I meant three and a half hours. Yeah. My, my bad. Anyway, we drive up. We go directly to the water station. To fill up. To fill the water as soon as we're, you know, close to our destination uh, camp spot. And then we see taped off ropes, Cones. trucks parked in front can't get in closed apparently there was no water. a water line break a few hours ago and so they had to shut the water off they had to shut down the dump tank and this is inside the Grand Canyon National Park so we would have had to have gone wait a minute this is our first view of the canyon I have to do the Chevy Chase oh I love this place <laughs> look at that that is awesome so we drove down to the camp area and because we need to talk to somebody and find out and a ranger what, came out, what are we yeah. going to do. Uh, then we met a really nice ranger lady. We didn't. 
my husband got out as he was sputtering. <laughs> got was out of the truck and met this very that nice ranger. That was a full ranger. sputter. Um, anyway, so we met this very nice ranger lady who said that in the campground they have a couple of hookups and we were able to drive in. So can I tell this part of the story? Okay, my God, and the drive through was awful. Well, you just told my punchline. <laughs> I'm serious. It was so I, I w narrow. Oh, and, and wait, was, no, I'm telling, no, I'm telling this part. This is, let me have some fun. Okay, go. We're driving on a really tiny path, which is just barely wide enough for this crazy if you had to but I'm there. getting there and she said go here to Juniper Road and turn around and then go back to spot number 183 there's a screw in water tap there yay so I'm turning around and all of a sudden there's somebody there are a bunch of guys in there trimming trees they had trucks lined up on the road so I went there's to go no around and I almost hit a rock I almost a hit tree. a tree Two then trees. I finally get to the pump and I'm on the wrong side of the RV and the pump and the hose is too short I had to get out I had to back up the truck my wife tried to put the water hose on put it on crooked it was a spraying everywhere was I a saw fountain. rainbows and unicorns it, was, it felt good, didn't it? It didn't feel, feel kind of good because it's actually 83 out here and we're at like 7,400 feet in elevation. Yeah. But we did fill up our water tank and now we're heading to our boondock location. We'll touch base with you. If you are going to boondock with the Seoul Horizon, it's very critical on the really warped and bumpy roads. Just go slow, right? Yes, go slow. I mean, yeah, you have axle problems, but I'm tending to assume that most people are just kind of hauling butt thinking these are extreme off-road trailers. They're not really designed, I don't think. No, they're not. For the, but we go yeah. really slow. She sounds like a little girl. She does. I don't know what that is. She well, she's hurt. Does. She hurt her hip, so. But she's not doing it as much shit. Oh, my, my God. God. <laughs> it's just me. I'm it's okay. Hi, there it is. Hi. I still love you. Did you say it goes up at 7.3? Yes. Hi. Hi. Yep, so we named her Wendy. So you want to talk about the outside stuff? Yeah, first? so okay. let's let's talk about the outside of the camper, things we like. First thing we did that we really do like and we're glad that we did was that we got the three inch lift and we had a new axle put on. I understand there's some other issues with the new axles. We're going to get that checked out. But with the lift, we put bigger instead of 205s. We put 225s on here, so they're a little bit bigger than the 10 ply Goodyear Endurance. We like those a lot. What we didn't we didn't like much is a really narrow step right here, and then a little bit further of a drop. So we ended up buying this on Amazon uh, because I've I've fallen what two or three times. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't because of beer either. It was just because I fell. <laughs> and then if you come up here, the window is awesome from the inside always. But pushing these buttons back in, I've already popped out two of these things. So one of the things I'm doing now. I'm just not taking it completely off. I and we put these in afterwards. Yeah. We, the, now it the was, soles come with yeah, these. Yeah. When we got it, it did not come with it, so we had to put it on. We did put a sway bar. The other thing that ours did not come with was the stinky slinky holder. 
So I went ahead and mounted my own on the front of the axle here. I think the new ones again come with their own holder now, but we didn't get that. The gray black tank, not a big fan. I'd rather have a gray tank and a black tank, but I understand this is a small unit. It's supposed to be lightweight. It's doing its job. The, the only other issue I've really got over here is this thing it always flies up. I'm gonna have to do something to try and get it done. What is that? Well, it's just a power cover so water doesn't get in dust and stuff. Doesn't get in it. Storage is fine for what we do. The back of the RV I did put on a backup camera. I mounted it to the light for the license plate. And so when I turn my running lights on during the day, I can actually see when I'm driving in traffic. My awesome wife, Cheryl. I'm going to ask her a simple question that might help some of you. What are the five favorite things? You're all going to end up buying a lot of stuff off Amazon. What are your five favorite things that you've got for the Soul Horizon? So for that, we're going to need to go inside. Number one, and we just got these, um, are these shelf holders. I don't know what you call those, but um, anyway, they work great. So... We've used these this trip. We've gone over bumpy roads. We have um, we have we've gone a lot of places with them, and they've worked out really well. What's number two? Number two is this uh, brand new iPad holder. Oh, I love do, this. I do like that. So we tend to not use our TV very we often. We haven't used it <laughs> once because you don't there's no reception. Ever. So um, that anyway, we got that. It works out great. It holds in place. We can watch whatever we want on our iPad. E. So number three, uh, we just got off of Amazon as well, and it's these motion sensor lights. Um, the cabinets tend to get really dark, so we put these on so that you know we can see throughout. It really nice in the middle of the night too. When somebody's sleeping, you don't have to turn on all the cabinet lights. So it and it saves on the precious battery life. Saves on the precious battery life. Okay, number four my bag holder oh this is cool so the bags were always in the um in the drawer they made a mess they took up space we never could find them so this little handy dandy little bag holder which so, we use for garbage yeah. you have a little hook right there that is number f five five is, the, is hooks. the hooks and we have them all over the cab the cabin um because we have coats and hats and keys we keep our keys <laughs> on it um, Pretty everything. Much everything. Um, it, they're amazing and I love them. All right, Rich, so I did my top five. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your top five things that we've got. Number one, and it, it's just me, it's a personal thing, but the stereo inside the sole sounds okay, but you can never turn it up loud enough. Just a little itty bitty Bose Bluetooth speaker. I use this, and you can ask my wife this, I use this. Every time. Non-stop. All day long. Just non-stop. The next thing I would say would be right up on my list is a set of power tools. I got all one brand with one battery, and I bought an extra battery because this not only operates my drill. What kind of, what kind is it? Uh, it doesn't matter. Rigid. It's a rigid, but it doesn't matter. But it operates the drill. It operates a portable fan. And it also operates our indoor vacuum cleaner because of those guys. Yes. They have so much hair. They're very hairy. So that's number two. Number three, a couple of separate five gallon water jugs. And I'll tell you why. When you're boondocking, the tank is relatively small in this thing. So we can do 90% of our hand washing, dishes, watering the dogs out of these. I'm even tempted to get one more. Number four is the Dodge Ram 2500 <laughs> diesel. It feels now like I'm towing a paper towel behind the truck. Stupid crazy, easy to tow. It's way more than is necessary for this RV. But if you want to make life simpler, this would be it.